Once upon a time, in an old stone monastery set in a hillside covered with vines, there lived a monk called Brother Heinrich. Brother Heinrich wasn't like all the other monks who lived in the monastery. They used to spend their time together working in the monastery vineyards, looking after the vines, picking the grapes and making wine. The wine from their monastery was the finest and juiciest in all the land, and people came from far and wide to try it. Brother Heinrich had to help make the wine too, but he worked by himself, except, that is, for Sigismund. Sigismund was the donkey who worked the wine press that squeezed the grapes. The wine press stood in a little cobbled courtyard, and Sigismund had to walk round and round the courtyard all day, pulling a long wooden arm that made the wine press work. Brother Heinrich put the grapes in and waited for the grape juice to trickle out into a big stone jar. When the jar filled up, he took it away to the cellars and fetched back an empty one. It was rather boring work for both of them, but they didn't mind. Brother Heinrich liked to talk to Sigismund, and Sigismund liked to listen. Sometimes he would answer Brother Heinrich in a friendly sort of way. Brother Heinrich talked about all sorts of things. How to eat wine jelly without it falling off your spoon. How to stop the mice biting your toes when you've got sandals on. But most of all, he liked to talk about music. Brother Heinrich loved music. He knew how to play lots of different instruments, even difficult ones like the harp and the sackbut. And he was good at singing, too. In fact, he sang so well that the abbot had put him in charge of the monastery choir. Every day when it was time for work to finish, Brother Heinrich took Sigismund back to his stable, gave him some hay, wished him good night, and hurried off to choir practice. But he felt sad that Sigismund was left out, so sometimes he let him come along to choir practice and sing with the choir. Sigismund liked that very much. He stood on his hind legs in the choir stalls and tried hard to follow the music, just like all the others in the choir. Brother Heinrich lent him an old pair of spectacles so he could read better. Sigismund felt very important. He joined in all the songs that the choir sang, though sometimes his voice did stick out a bit. <laughs> One day, when Brother Heinrich and Sigismund were working as usual at the wine press, one of the other brothers came running up to them. Uh, Brother Heinrich, he said, still out of breath, the abbot wants to see you immediately. Brother Heinrich groaned. The abbot, who was the head of the monastery, was always complaining and interfering, and when he wanted to see people, it usually meant trouble. Oh, what does he want, Brother Joseph? asked Brother Heinrich. I don't know, but you better hurry, answered Brother Joseph. So Brother Heinrich hurried off to the abbot's room and knocked at the door. "'Come in,' said the abbot rather sourly. Brother Heinrich came in. The abbot was sitting at his desk, reading a long and important-looking letter. He looked up. "'Brother Heinrich,' he began, "'I have just received this letter from the archbishop. He tells me that he will be travelling through this part of the country on important business at Christmas time.' and he'd like to come in person to our Christmas morning service and Christmas dinner afterwards. The abbot looked cross. He didn't like the archbishop's visits very much, because they meant lots of cleaning and tidying and telling everyone to be on their best behaviour. The other monks didn't mind, though. The archbishop was plump and jolly, and he never seemed to notice even if things were a bit untidy. He often happened to be travelling through their part of the country on important business at Christmas, on Christmas Day, the monks opened their very best and most special wine, and the Archbishop liked to try it, just to make sure it was as good as last year's. "'The Archbishop himself will be at our Christmas morning service,' continued the abbot. "'The choir is your responsibility, Brother Heinrich. You must make sure that they sing better than they have ever sung before.' "'I'll do my best,' promised Brother Heinrich. "'And one thing more,' 
said the abbot. That ridiculous donkey must be dismissed from the choir. Whatever will the archbishop think if he sees a donkey singing in our monastery choir? It'll make a laughing stock of us all. Besides, he can only sing two notes, E and Or. That's not fair, Father Abbot, protested Brother Heinrich. Brother Ignatius has been in the choir for fifty years, and he can only sing one note, and it's nearly always the wrong one. Not another word, interrupted the abbot. The donkey must go, and that's final. Brother Heinrich felt very sad as he walked back to the little courtyard where Sigismund was still walking round and round. He didn't want to tell him the bad news. He cleared his throat. Um, Sigismund, the archbishop is coming to our Christmas morning service, he began. But, but, I'm afraid, the abbot says, you can't sing in the choir any more. Sigismund carried on walking round and round. Oh, well, he thought to himself, I suppose I never did have much of a voice anyway. Brother Heinrich tried to cheer him up. I promise I'll tell you how the rehearsals go, and I'll teach you all the new songs we do. But they both knew it wouldn't be the same. Rehearsals began for the special Christmas morning service. Brother Heinrich stood in front of the choir, beating time with a twig and singing very loudly. They practised hard every day, but somehow nothing seemed to go right. Secretly, everyone missed Sigismund. Soon, the monks in the choir started to complain. "'We're bored with these stupid songs,' said one of them. "'Nothing but the same old Christmas carols year after year,' said another. "'It's all your fault, young Heinrich,' grumbled Brother Ignatius, who'd been in the choir for fifty years and thought it wasn't like it used to be. "'You musicians are all the same, sitting around dreaming about your precious music all the time. "'If you ask me, you don't know the meaning of an honest day's work.' "'You're supposed to be so good at music,' said one of the younger monks. "'Well, why don't you write us a new carol, so we won't have to do all the same old ones over again?' "'Yes, write us a carol.' cried everyone together, except for Brother Ignatius, who preferred the old carols anyway. "'But I've never written a carol before,' said Brother Heinrich. "'Well, you'll just have to do your best,' said the others. "'A new carol will make all the difference to the Christmas service.' So Brother Heinrich cut himself a new quill from an eagle's feather and laid in a supply of fresh parchment. Every night he sat down at the desk in his little room to try and write his new carol. He tried and tried. All sorts of ideas came into his head, but somehow none of them was quite right. Christmas drew nearer and nearer, and Brother Heinrich still hadn't written his carol. What am I going to do? Do, Sigismund, he cried in despair. The choir say they must have the new carol so they can practice it, and the abbot has got to hear about it and keeps asking if I've written it yet. Sigismund looked at him sympathetically. Brother Heinrich kept on trying, but he still couldn't seem to write his new carol. Finally, Christmas Eve came. All day he paced up and down his room and scribbled frantically, while Sigismund, whose work was over for the season, sat in a corner watching anxiously. By the evening there was still nothing on the parchment but crossings out. "'It's no good, Sigismund,' he said sadly. "'I'll have to give up. "'Looks as if it isn't going to be a very merry Christmas for either of us. "'The abbot doesn't want you in the choir any more, "'and now the choir isn't going to want me any more "'because I can't write their new carol. "'Come on, I'd better put you in your stable for the night.' The two of them walked slowly, side by side, across the courtyard and towards the stables. It was a bright, starry night, and the only sound to be heard was the clip-clop of Sigismund's hooves across the cobblestones. At least, Brother Heinrich thought it was the only sound to be heard. "'Stop a minute, Sigismund,' he said. "'Listen, can you hear something?' 
Sigismund stopped and pricked up his ears. Then he shook his head. Sigismund, there is something. Listen, it sounds like singing. This time Sigismund heard it too. It was singing. And at first neither of them could see where it was coming from. Then as the sound of the singing drew nearer, they did see where it was coming from and they couldn't believe their eyes. A little way in front of them was a big circle of very bright light, so bright that at first their eyes were dazzled and they couldn't see anything else. Then, as they got used to the light, they saw what it really was. Angels! More of them than you could ever count, all in shining white robes, dancing round in a ring and singing. Sigismund stood there amazed. Then one of the angels stretched out its hands towards them, inviting them to join in their dance. Brother Heinrich and Sigismund felt a little shy, but soon they were whirling round, holding hands with the angels. Sigismund never thought he'd get excited about going round and round in a circle, but suddenly it was the loveliest feeling he could ever imagine. light faded, the singing stopped, the angels disappeared, and all that was left was Brother Heinrich lying dizzy and breathless on the ground with Sigismund beside him. Did it really happen, Sigismund? wondered Brother Heinrich. That was such a beautiful song the angels sang. If only I could write a carol just like that, we could sing it at the Christmas service tomorrow. Sigismund, why don't we sing the angels' carol at the Christmas service? If I go and write it down now, we can practice it first thing tomorrow and it'll be ready for the service. I'll tell the choir the angels sang it to me. Brother Heinrich rushed back to his room with Sigismund clip-clopping close behind him. He sat down excitedly at his desk, dipped his quill in the ink pot, and started writing out the angels' carol as fast as he could go, sprinkling sand on the parchment every so often to help the ink dry. terrible thing had happened. He couldn't remember how the tune ended. He tried all sorts of different endings. But none of them was the same as the angels had sung. Oh, Sigismund wailed Brother Heinrich. We're not going to be able to do the angels' carol after all. I can't remember the last bit. See, the tune's no use without an ending. What was that, Sigismund? Brother Heinrich clapped his hands. Sigismund, that's it. Now I remember how the tune ends. Heinrich quickly wrote down the last bit of the tune in case he forgot it again. Then the two of them danced round and round the little room singing the angel's carol till they both fell asleep exhausted. Early next morning, Brother Heinrich ran to find the abbot and tell him everything that had happened. The abbot didn't believe a word of the story about the angels, 
but he was so relieved that they were going to have the new carol to sing to the archbishop after all, that as a special concession he said he would allow Sigismund to sing in the choir again just this once. Brother Heinrich was overjoyed. He ran off to tell Sigismund, who could hardly believe his good fortune, and the two of them hurried along to choir practice. The choir rehearsed the angel's carol till it was perfect. By now it was almost time for the Christmas service to begin, and they all took their places in the choir stalls just before the archbishop's solemn procession arrived. The service went beautifully, and everyone was very excited when the moment came for the angel's carol. Christmas dinner afterwards, the Archbishop declared that it had been the best Christmas service he could ever remember. He told the steward that he thought the wine was also the best he could remember, but he wasn't quite sure, so he'd better taste a little more so he could make up his mind. At last the Archbishop rose to his feet, rather unsteadily, to make his customary speech. "'My friends,' he said, "'this has been a very special Christmas for us all.' Your abbot tells me that the fine new carol we heard this morning was sung to Brother Heinrich by the angels. If it be so, it is surely a miracle, and we should thank God for it. As for the donkey who sings in the choir, your abbot fears I might think him a strange sight. Well, my friends, there are times, the archbishop looked at his wine glass, when I see sights far stranger than a harmless donkey singing in a choir. Long may he continue a member. Though he sings only two notes, there are surely times when those two notes are exactly the right ones. Brother Heinrich and Sigismund smiled secretly to each other. So, my friends, concluded the beaming Archbishop, God's blessing upon this house and upon all the good work that is accomplished here. The Archbishop eyed his wine glass again. And a Merry Christmas to one and all. Do you think he knew about how you finished the angel's carol for me? said Brother Heinrich to Sigismund as he led him back to the stable afterwards. But Sigismund only answered the same way he always did. That night the two friends both went to sleep very happy and still thinking about their wonderful experience with the angels. They were sure of one thing, it had been the very best Christmas they had ever had.